<clears throat> so what this is saying is that the derivative of an integral is equal to just the plane function, but if one of our limits is a variable, we have to multiply by the derivative of that variable, okay? So if it's just x, then you're just multiplying by 1. Not a big deal. But let's talk about well, why do we get to ignore a here, okay? Why do we get to ignore a? So let's just look in general terms. If I do the integral part of this, okay, the integral from a to x of little f would be big F of x minus big F of a. And then if I take the derivative of that, okay, the derivative of big F gets me back to little f. But if I take the derivative, remember I got to take the derivative of the inside, okay, so that's where the x prime comes from, minus, well, big F of a, a is a constant, you plug a constant into a function, you get an answer, the derivative of a constant is zero. zero. So, this is why the second fundamental theorem works the way that it works. What it's telling you is, if they ask you to do this, you don't have to go, you don't have to anti-differentiate, plug in, and then take the derivative, because you're just getting back to this function, okay? You're just getting back to this function, the only caveat is, you've got to be careful with your limits. If it's a variable, you've got to multiply by the derivative of that variable. Now, if both of them are variables, you got to do the same thing. Instead of having minus zero here, we would have minus f of x times the derivative of the lower limit. Okay? Um, so that's that's the reason why this works the way it works. So let's look at an example. What's the caveat? Huh? What? Caveat. The caveat? It's like a, um, it's like not even an exception, but just a little tiny detail. Ooh, kind of. Alright, um, so if we are asked to evaluate the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 0 to x of the square root of t squared plus 1 dt. Now again, remember I pointed this out yesterday. Your variables have to be different. Um, so we've got t's in the function, so our limit has the x. Those can't be the same variables. Okay. So this is as simple as it looks. You're taking the derivative of an integral, those cancel. The only thing you have to do is you have to plug in the limit. So this is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1. And for the sake of just reminding you, times 1, the derivative of x is 1. Obviously that doesn't affect the problem here, but I just want to emphasize that you can't forget to multiply by the derivative of one of your limits. So multiply by the variable Right, right. Yeah, it, it's times the derivative of the limit. Not the derivative. Not the derivative of the function. No. No, it's times x prime. X is the limit. Okay? Now, let me make a note. If I modified this problem slightly, and I changed it to x to 0, what would change about my problem is that's now my lower limit, so it would be negative square root of x squared plus 1. Because that's my lower limit, you subtract the lower limit, so you stick a negative in front of it and still technically times one, okay? But <clears throat> you really don't have to write that, okay? These problems really are as easy as they look, guys. Okay, they really, really are. Okay, um, so here's example two. Uh, integrate to find big F as a function of X and demonstrate the second fundamental theorem of calculus by differentiating the answer you just found. So we're going to evaluate this definite integral, the definite integral from 4 to x of the square root of t dt. And then we're going to, well, let's just do that part and then we'll talk about the second part of the problem. Okay? <clears throat> so here's our function. So we're going to integrate. So f of big F of x is equal to the antiderivative of the square root of t. Well, we've got to write that as t to the 1 half. 
So add one to our uh, exponent, 3 halves, divide by our new exponent, well, dividing by a fraction, turns into multiplication, and we flip it. And we plug in, or we're going to evaluate from 4 to x. So, plug in x, 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, minus, technically we could have factored out the 2 thirds, uh, 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves. Well, guess what? We just did part of this problem a second ago. Um, so we have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 over 2. I do the root first. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. So that gives us 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 16 thirds. You could back out the two-thirds if you want to, but this is probably how the answer is going to So that is finding big F as a function of X, because big F was defined as the definite interval. Okay, so that is the big F function. Now, demonstrating the second fundamental theorem of calculus by differentiating the answer to these found. So we're going to take the derivative of that function that we just found. Two-thirds X to the three-halves minus 16 over 3. And we take the derivative of that. We've got 2 thirds times bring down our exponent, subtract 1 from our exponent. The derivative of a constant is 0. Well, look at what we got. x to the 1 half, which is what we would have gotten if we had just plugged x into our function or into the, the function that was being integrated, okay? So I'm showing you why the second fundamental theorem works. If we integrate, completely evaluate, and then take the derivative, we're going to get just exactly what we would have gotten if we just plugged that in. Okay? Yeah, that's it. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at one that, that finally has something besides just x. Okay, find the derivative of this function that is defined, big F of x is defined as the limit from pi over 2 to x cubed of the cosine of t dt. So if we're taking the derivative of this, you don't actually take the derivative of cosine, okay? The derivative and the integral undo each other, so all we do is plug in the x cubed for t times the derivative of x cubed, 3x squared. Pi over 2 is not a variable. It has no effect on our problem. Now, be careful with this. The 3x squared does not combine with the x cubed. The 3x squared goes in front. 3x squared goes in front. It does not, it, that is not the cosine of 3x to the fifth. Okay, it's 3x squared times the cosine of x cubed. That's it. Okay, that is, that is it. The lower limit doesn't matter because, as we just demonstrated in that last example, even when we plug it in, because it's a number, we plug it in, you get a number as an answer, and when you take the derivative of a number, the answer is zero. So yes, it, if your limit is a number, it has no effect on the derivative of the integral. Now, if both of these were variables, then you would do this minus cosine of, say that bottom variable was x minus the cosine of x. That's what you would add to that. Um, or vice versa, if those were flipped, then there would be a negative in front of this because the x cubed would be the lower one. All right? I mean, I've seen problems just like, I mean, just... Is there a real life application? Is there a real life application? Oh, not really. Because, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those computation things. Because taking the derivative of an integral, you're just getting back to the original function. It's not really an application. It's just 
they're testing your your notation skills literally is what they're doing. 